thanks primarily to Tesla and its Powerwall consumer energy storage products, not to mention the many of other grid-tied and off-grid energy storage products now available, there are more people than ever before who can keep their houses powered when there's a brownout or a power cut. But not everyone can afford to put thousands of dollars of solar panels on their roof or battery packs in their garage, meaning that when the power goes out, they're at the mercy of the local utility company and Mother Nature. That is, unless you happen to own pretty much any electric car on the market today, because with one of those, a little time and a few hundred in cash, you can keep your refrigerator running, power some low power lights, and in my case, even edit a YouTube show. Want to know more? Stick around to find out next. Hi there, my name is Nikki Gordon Bloomfield from Transport Evolved, and today I want to show you how it's possible to get emergency backup power from your electric car with little more than an inexpensive 12 volt to mains power inverter from your local hardware store and a correctly rated extension cord. And while a commercial battery backup system and solar panels are the preferred option, if like me, you rent, that's not an option. So this solution, as I recently learned, works perfectly. You see, as regular viewers all know, we had a power cut at the house on Friday morning last week thanks to a major storm passing through the Pacific Northwest. And while some of our neighbours got their power back on by the end of the day, our house, and consequentially my editing studio, stayed without power for the best part of 36 hours. Nevertheless, I was able to keep the refrigerator cool and some basic equipment powered thanks to a 12 volt mains inverter and the 24 kilowatt hour battery pack found inside our 2013 Nissan Leaf. Best of all, this solution cost me just $200 and with a little extra work should be adaptable so that either of our electric cars can provide a constant one kilowatt to run our home at any point in the future. To start, I headed out to my local DIY store, where I picked up an inexpensive 12 volt power inverter for just under $100. Added to that, I picked up a heavy duty 100 foot power cord, a secondary 20 foot extension cord, and a spare power strip. As a side note here, make sure the inverter you buy comes with a way to direct connect to your car's 12 volt battery using either post terminal connections, or in the case of mine, heavy duty clips. With all my equipment purchased, I stopped off at my local Fred Meyers, which happened to still have power and a working Chademo DC quick charger in the parking lot. 30 minutes later, I have a Nissan Leaf with about 96% batteries charged, and by the time I got to the house, that was down to 91%, so I had plenty to spare. Luckily, I rent a townhouse with a garage, so I can always pull in an almost full electric car into my garage, pull down the door and leave the car on without worrying about anyone running off with it. Obviously, however, if you don't have a way to secure your car, this solution will require a little extra work on your part. With the car switched off, locate your car's 12 volt starter battery. The location of this does vary according to your car, but for the Nissan Leaf, you'll find it under the bonnet. Other cars, like the Chevy Volt, have it hidden under the load bay floor at the back. With the 12 volt battery found, connect the appropriate side of the battery to the corresponding side of the inverter. Negative goes to negative and positive goes to positive. Next, power your electric car on. To keep power drain at a minimum, make sure you turn off automatic headlights and daytime running lights, if you can, as well as the radio, heating and air conditioning. It's important here to keep the car in its ready state too. Simply turning on the accessory circuit won't work, as the car needs to be able to charge its 12 volt battery from the main traction battery pack. I'll cover this more in a second. With your inverter connected and your car on, plug in your extension cord to your inverter and then when ready, press the power button on your inverter. If it's like mine, you should hear a reassuring beep as the inverter powers up. Congratulations! You've now got power running from your car to your mains lead, and at this point you can plug in all the devices you need to power. Bear in mind though that things like kettles and microwaves will require far more power than your inverter will likely be able to provide, unless you have one of those special low power ones designed for use when camping. Refrigerators, at least smaller ones, should be fine operating on just one kilowatt of power. But to be extra prepared, check the specifications for your refrigerator and other essential appliances before a power cut so that you know which devices can be powered in which order and which ones can't. Another point here is that while laptop computers are generally really happy operating from power from a cheap inverter, some desktop computers, televisions and other large appliances aren't. 
even if their power drain is lower than the maximum continuous power output of your inverter. Cheap inverters output something called a modified sine wave rather than a pure sine wave you'll find coming out of the wall in most houses. Now, I'm not going to go into the technical differences between the two here, but the important thing to remember is that the sensitive power electronics inside some devices need a pure, clean power signal, while others can happily work on the choppy, blocky output of a cheap 12 volt inverter. Again, if you're worried about which devices can and can't use the modified sine wave output of a cheap power inverter, check with your device manufacturers ahead of time. Or alternatively, invest a few more hundred in a more expensive 12 volt inverter, as they generally produce cleaner mains signals. As always, your mileage may vary, and while some say modified sine waves can damage appliances, most modern equipment does seem to withstand the fluctuations without nary a problem. As for buzzing, well, you may find that some things buzz when you use them from a 12 volt inverter, either because the power is too dirty for the appliance or because there's no ground, since most 12 volt mains inverters don't have a ground. So it's up to you to decide if you should continue using those devices that buzz or unplug them. Personally, I'd err on the side of caution. So you've got all your things plugged in, you're not overloading the circuit and everything is operating as it should. What next? Well, you're going to want to keep your eye on the car, so make sure to check on it every hour or so. Based on my experiences, a fully charged car like the Nissan Leaf will happily keep things running for hours without breaking into a sweat. In fact, if you're pulling the full one kilowatt, for example, you'll have about 20 hours of battery power before you need to think about disconnecting your system and finding a functioning charging station nearby. Why? Well, while the house is running off the 12 volt battery, your car is powering the, the 12 volt battery. It has a DC to DC circuit in it to ensure that the 12 volt battery stays fully charged when the car is on and running. And in the Leaf, this circuit can provide about one kilowatt of power from the traction battery to the 12 volt battery under load, which is why I went for a one kilowatt inverter. You could technically go for a larger one, but you'd ultimately drain the 12 volt battery pack because you'd be drawing battery power out more quickly than you're putting it in. This is also the reason why your car needs to be on and ready to drive, as the main contactors on the battery pack need to be engaged for the DC to DC converter to keep the 12 volt battery topped up. Yep, this is all a bit lossy and there are inefficiencies at every step here. However, if this is the only choice, it's a good one. Disconnecting everything is of course the opposite of connection. Unplug devices first, then switch off the inverter, and then you can switch off your car and disconnect the 12 volt cables. And of course, this works best if you know that there's a nearby charging station that works. If not, you're gonna to need to check on your car more frequently to check there's enough power in your car's battery pack to make it to the nearest charging station. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck. As for me, well, having spent nearly two days powering my house from a Nissan Leaf, I'm going to invest a couple of extra connectors so that I can wire a permanent solution into both my Leaf and my RAV4 EV. That way, even in a major disaster, I can use both cars to keep the house powered if I need, switching one out for the other so I can find a local charging station. And given that I live near both a solar powered Chademo DC quick charging station and a major city, I'm hopeful that even in a major earthquake, if my house doesn't have power, I'll be able to get power locally to keep the house running until the local utility gets my house mains back on and it's all gonna be great. Of course, the best option here would be for me to be purchasing a leaf to home backup power solution for my home or have a power wall or solar panels on the roof of my house. And when I finally get my home stateside, we might just do that. Until then, this is a solution I think works pretty darned well. What do you think? Have you used a similar solution before? Have you used an electric car to power your home in an emergency? And how was it? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. If you'd like to see more videos from Transport Evolved, please consider supporting me through Patreon. There's a link below and a clickable link at the end of this video, and I'll be back tomorrow with more clean, green awesomeness. Until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep evolving.